Today we will be making a 3D printed gearbox and showing why it can't go past 50,000 RPM. Everything I use to make this gearbox is 3D printed besides two steel linear rails. I had a couple ideas how I wanted to go about creating this type of gear, because there are different kinds and different gear combinations, but ultimately I ended up choosing a helix design. This also allows for reduced noise and it is also self-aligning, so I wouldn't have to worry about them slipping past each other when they're turning, especially with higher forces. The rest of the parts that I used were quite simple to make. Uh, there weren't any complex geometries, so in creating the housing and the crank, um, all of that was quite simple. I just made sure that they were thicker than I would normally use, and also when printing, higher infill and higher wall thickness to make sure that they were strong enough. After a couple days of 3D printing, it was time to test fit everything. I had created an assembly to make sure everything fit beforehand, so that way I could check things like tolerance and whatnot, so that way everything fits, uh, because with 3D printing, there can be some error and making sure that there's enough tolerance between parts um, will help reduce rubbing uh, because especially in a gearbox like this, uh, more friction can definitely be multiplied throughout the entire system very quickly. Definitely one of the issues with this type of gear is that the way that they mesh together is that since they don't slide past each other, you can't fit them like normal gears. So they have to be meshed together before you insert them into the actual gearbox. So that definitely made assembly a little bit tricky but since the tolerances were big enough, I was able to force them into place. As you can see, adding just one gear doesn't really do anything. Uh, the gear ratio between the crank gear and the first gear is one to one, so there is no difference in speed. Now adding a second gear, you can see a bigger jump in RPM. The gear ratio here is one to 3.33. So every single time the bigger gear spins once, the smaller gear is going to spin 3.33 3 times. Now, this gear ratio is gonna end up being multiplied as we add more gears to the system. The downside is that the force needed to spin these gears is also going to increase. Now adding a third gear, you can see that there's a lot more resistance. While the RPM is significantly faster, it's definitely much more difficult than the previous gear combinations before. And now with a fourth gear, this output is going to be 27 times faster than the input assuming, again, the RPM stays the same throughout each gear combination. Uh, but here, if the input is around 60 RPM, we should expect to get 1,620 RPM on the output. Adding the fifth gear, it's significantly more difficult to spin. So we can't really keep it at such a high RPM because more force is required and we could risk damaging uh, the gears or the handle. Um, but with this, even if we were to go down to 30 RPM, we should still be able to get over 12,000 RPM on the output. And then going all the way up to a six gear, we could expect upwards of 20,000 RPM. While kind of impractical, just because the amount of force required, as you can see, it takes significantly more force and the input is going much, much slower. So we're probably only gonna end up getting a couple RPM uh, using six gears. And then on the seventh gear, that's when the entire system failed because the amount of force required is just gonna break all the printed parts. And that's kind of just the limits of 3D printing. On the crank gear, it definitely, you can see right here where it failed, right on the teeth, which is kind of what I expected. But then on the black gear here, you can see right where it's split. And that's right at the layer. And that's kind of hard to control because that's just an issue with 3D printing. You can increase the temperature to help uh, layer adhesion and also make layers a lot smaller or thinner. I'm not sure how much more I can improve the gears to get it to maybe be able to spin on a sixth or a seventh gear or even eight. Um, but just the amount of force uh, required going into the system, we could be upwards of a couple hundred pounds trying to spin the eighth gear. Overall, I think this project was a success and definitely laid some groundwork for future projects so I can understand how gears work better and how to uh, make things run more efficiently because definitely using five gears probably isn't as good as maybe using just four just because it's easier to spin. And also um, you can make the, the gearbox smaller and won't risk damaging it in the long term. Uh, and then I definitely wanna use this to maybe run some kind of generator or use it for a flywheel to help store energy and kind of just do fun projects like that. And if you guys have anything else that you would like to see, just leave them in the comments down below. Please subscribe and thanks again for watching.